Good morning, welcome to the vlog. I say good morning, you could be watching this at any time. I'm feeling a bit under the weather at the moment. Um, kind of didn't have a great night's sleep the last two nights. You can sort of hear it on my throat. I'm not feeling 100%, but I said I'd vlog today, so I am doing. I did want to highlight something that normally sits up here, which is something I got from, um, oh, what's he called? The War of Art guy. I can't remember his name now. One second. Yeah, I've got it. Stephen Pressfield, War of Art. That was it. Um, but I just want to read these things to you because I stick them on the wall because it's what I try and aspire to do every single day. I don't necessarily fulfill uh, number one, never mind the, the, the 19, but it, I'll read them to you. And it says, the professional shows up every day. The professional stays on the job all day. The professional is committed over the long haul. For the professional, the stakes are high and they're real. Furthermore, the professional is patient, they seek order, they demystify, they act in the face of fear, they don't accept excuses, they play it as it lays, they are prepared. The professional does not show off. They dedicate themselves to mastering technique. They do not hesitate to ask for help. And they do not take failure or success personally. They don't identify with their instrument and they endure adversity. The professional self-validates, reinvents themselves, and is recognised by other professionals. I keep that on my wall just to remind me of the duties that I have to myself, the kind of responsibilities I feel I have as a musician each and every day, with, and also with my other uh, aspects of my, my life. And I think that could apply to all of us, can't it? I mean, I think if we all kind of held our, our jobs whether they're paid jobs or more important jobs like parenthood or siblings or caring for family. I think if we, we were really dedicated and professional about those things, um, it would make a difference. Hopefully I'm going to be dedicated and professional on this gig this afternoon. Back at Audley End as I was last Sunday and then we'll do a typical Sunday Q&A later on today. So I need to get my instruments packed away. I hope my voice lasts till tonight. the way to the gig. It's a bit cloudier today than it was last week, which might not be a bad thing. It was a bit warm last week. Um, it, got, well, it wasn't too bad. The marquee got a bit warm. But yeah, so it's a really lovely setting. Nice chilled out kind of Sunday afternoon. People having picnics. It reminds me a little bit of what you see in Newport. Uh, but there's no seat anywhere nearby, obviously. Um, but yeah, people having picnics and just uh, chilling out in these beautiful gardens listening to some jazz so it'd be great the fact that it's uh, back with Joel and Derek again so we can get playing some of the stuff that you heard on Jazz Trio by the way there are still copies of that album available and in fact I'm going to do a special deal starting from today where you can get Jazz Trio and Jazz Vespers both albums for £15 okay and I'll throw in free shipping for that as well so if you don't already have a copy of the album this is kind of completely on the fly <laughs> head to music.damforshaw.com which takes you to my bank camp page you can get all of those and I'll even sign them for you <laughs> Thank you. 
So I told you, it's a really stunning place here at Audley End. Definitely highly recommend if you're ever in this kind of area to pop around and have a look at it. I'm not normally being a person who's a great fan of these English country gardens, having been bored silly as a child going around these places, but this, this is stunning. Well worth coming in. They do lots of like classic car days and stuff like that. There's a cricket pitch normally across the way, but nobody's playing cricket today. Just got those drone shots that you've just seen um, from the other side of the building, which was very nice. I came here back in April, if you check out this vlog, um, and flew the drone. Maybe it was March time actually. Gosh, I can't remember. It was winter anyway. It was cold uh, and got some nice shots, but the drone really couldn't get beyond this lake. The other thing is, I've just noticed the place is covered in crap. I didn't see before. So I hope you enjoyed that gig, um, what you saw of it anyway. I wanted to just finish off today before my voice completely gives out. The question that James asked me on Twitter, and it goes like this, and the, it's the title of today's vlog, which is a question I get asked an awful lot. Hi Dan, I'm currently just finished my lower six year, so that's uh, 16, 17. Um, I'm going into upper six this year, and I'm considering going to music college. Should I go to music college or should I do something else? I'm, I'd like to become a professional musician, but I hear lots of different advice. What do you think? I think the best advice I can give you is something I told one of my students, Rob. He's going off the Royal Northern this year. He's got his place. It'll start in end of September, October. I said to Rob, the thing is, when I left school, and I was going into college, so kind of the turn of this century, so 99 to 2000, the route still for a performer, the kind of... The, um, the kind of career path was to get a recording contract, even as a jazz musician, Joshua Roman, Chris Potter, those kind of guys had recording contracts. Bramford had a recording contract with Sony. That was kind of the path you were aiming for. That completely went in five, six years, just completely kaput. Very few people now, even those top guys, none of those top guys, as far as I'm aware, have a major recording contract. All the major labels have ditched their jazz. That all changed and it still is changing. There was no YouTube, nothing like that. And what I would suggest is you get tooled up, this is what I told Rob, get the best tools you can and however the industry is going to be in four or five years time, make sure that you're the best musician you can be, but you've also got the skills that means you can adapt to those new situations. And I guess that almost speaks to any kind of subject. Get as much knowledge as you can that's going to be useful, tap into as many different people's ideas, absorb everything like a sponge, do not think you know it all. And then when you come out the other end, you'll have the skills and hopefully, you know, the improvisational life skills, I call them, to be able to go with wherever the industry is going. And I think in, I think it will bed down in the next five to ten years time about how music's going to go. I think it's still, the kaleidoscope is still in flux at the moment and the kind of as things land. I've just been watching this and realised I'm not getting to an end here. So I'm going to stop what we're doing there. Here's the answer, James. If you are certain... 100% certain that you don't want to do anything else in the world, that you're called to do music, you go to music college. If you're not sure, go and do something else. Get tooled up with other skills, keep your music going, maybe do a music degree rather than a performance degree, and then see what happens. But as I was trying to get out with the industry, nobody really knows, just get tooled up as best you can, whether that's skills in music or other things. But if you, like you say, you want to be a professional musician, music college. But that's just the one q and I wanted to do today because it, it fills up my inbox quite regularly. I am planning how the podcast will be for this. I am aiming that the podcast will be launched before the end of August, the first episode. But obviously I'll need to make sure my voice comes back. Tomorrow I will be in London and I will be sent, doing you a very quick vlog about how Big Ben is going to fall silent. See you soon.